What's up, everyone? Welcome back to another interview with the 30-Day Speaker Summit. Uh, we have an awesome guest, uh, Darren Cabrell from Barrie, Ontario. Uh, Darren's been a really good friend of mine. And you know, in today's topic specifically, uh, what we want to talk about is um, you know, creating a persuasive personality. And I'll kind of give you a quick background of Darren. But before I kind of get into that, Darren, is there any words you, you just kind of want to add right off the bat before I kind of give your quick introduction? No, man, that, that's great. Thanks so much for having me, man. I just want to jump in and say that. And I mean, it's an honor to be here. I've known you for a while. We've had a lot of conversations. Um, we've helped each other in a lot of ways over the years. And I mean, I think your experience has been super valuable and, and hopefully I've been able to add value to you. And I'm excited to kind of do that today for everyone else. Wicked. Thank you, Darren, so much. My name is Daniel Francis. In case you guys don't know, uh, I am the creator of the program called Master Your Stutter. So Darren, uh, just to kind of give you guys a quick break uh, down of Darren. Darren went from working a plumbing apprentice job in the housing projects of Toronto uh, to a CEO of the top three Canadian digital marketing agencies called Sweet, uh, sorry, Suit Social. Darren's journey has been anything but straightforward, uh, which is why I love bringing him on because he, uh, he's gone through different phases and I can't wait to actually dig into them. But after building and selling several businesses before the age of 22 years old, Darren fell in love with the process of marketing and scaling businesses with social media. Uh, in, in late 2016, Darren doubled down on his strengths and launched his own social media marketing agency called Sweet um, Suits Social Inc., helping clients take their business online and scale with social media and online advertising, especially in this COVID world that we're currently in, um, where the pandemic has affected a lot of different businesses. And in addition to running his own agency, Darren also speaks to thousands of entrepreneurs across North America to the topic of business growth, digital marketing, and entrepreneurship via live events and his own podcast called Security to Authority. So Darren, how are you doing again? <laughs> I'm good, man. I'm good. That was, that was a big intro. No worries about the sweets, man. Everyone says that. It's totally my fault, but there's an interesting story behind the name and why I chose that. So I yeah. can't change it. I mean, I would love to know a quick, a quick little background. <laughs> Super quick background. So there's two reasons behind it. I tell everyone there's a public reason, a private reason. So when I started the agency, um, the real reason I called it that was my last job that I had. I had a background in sales. My last job I had was selling suits at Morse. It's a Canadian, obviously, suit retailer, right? Um, and I put that in the name for myself to remember not to go back to that. Mm. Um, I hated my job at the time. I hated what I was doing. And I put it into the name of the business I have right now to be like, hey, remember what you were doing. Don't go back there. Um, <laughs> what I tell people publicly is, you know, we were, as a marketing company, we thought we'd target the suits, right? Those upper bureaucrats, those guys running big corporations that, you know, they don't have the creativity, they don't have it in house. And so we're going to service the suits, so to speak. But the real reason was for my past job. <laughs> That's awesome. That's awesome. Yeah. Cool, Darren. Well, you know, the one thing, and I was telling this to you, I believe last night, I was talking about how you have a natural gift of communication. I know you're like, <laughs> you know, I've, I've never really heard that before from yeah. someone else, but I'll um, it. it's, you know, I train a lot of people who struggle with articulating their words and having confidence behind, you know, you know, like I have a group that I train every um, twice a week right. uh, that are my clients. And one of the biggest things is belief in themselves and actually valuing the words they say. And I think that's something that you have. And um, whether that you were born like that, whether you built that, whether it's genetics, I really want to dig into that because, because you have that skill, Darren, you have what's called a persuasive personality and huh. not, not in a bad way. Like he's, yeah. he knows how to persuade people. Watch <laughs> out. I'm a drug dealer. <laughs> he will get Long you. Long story short. Yeah. yeah. But, but he has a personality that is attractive. There's affinity for it. People want to spend time with him. And, and ultimately, especially in business, the, why you, the reason why you've been so successful is you have a trusting personality. You're, mm. you're knowledgeable. You have the data and you're able to put it into words for people to simplify it and make sense to them. That's why they want to do business with you. Right. I don't know if you want to add anything to that, but that's kind of how I would sum it up with this whole category. No, I think I, you, you apparently know me better than I know myself. I'm like super <laughs> unself-aware. So um, yeah, you're, you're probably spot on, man. And I mean, I don't really have, I, like I have noticed that through business, it's been extremely helpful. Like when you can communicate, uh, whether it's been on the smallest of scales, just like communicating with team members or being on stage and speaking to hundreds of people, which we've done, um, you know, it's, it's helpful in both scenarios. Cause if you can't communicate, if you can't have conversations with other people and get your ideas across, you can be the smartest person in the world. But if that can't come out of your mouth in a way that makes sense, that's persuasive, that people can buy, 
um, and utilize that information, then it's, it's, it's useless and it's hard to get anywhere without figuring that out. So yeah, I, I must be relatively decent at it. Um, it's really not been trained or taught. I guess it's just maybe the one skill I have, um, but it's been useful. Yeah, no doubt. Cool. So I definitely want to dig deep into that and see if there's, you know, I'm sure there's a lot of gems that people can learn and actually apply and model the same behavior. So, yeah. um, you know, the, the, the first main question I have for you, Darren, kind of right off the bat is what does uh, persuasion mean to you and having a persuasive personality? What does that mean to you and why is it important to have? Oh, that's a good question. <laughs> so, I mean, on a surface level, persuasion to me is the ability to accurately relay your thoughts and ideas to another individual to influence an outcome. So something that you want to happen now to do that. I mean, ethically, you're not trying to lie to anyone. You're not trying to convince them of, of like any bullshit. You're, you're legitimately trying to get an idea across. Um, that's the initial outcome. But I mean, deeper than that, it's figuring out how that person communicates. So for me, persuasion is being able to figure out how other people communicate and what they need to make decisions or what they need to properly understand and communicating to them in a way that they understand because everyone else understands differently. So you can't be persuasive in one way. And it's not like a, you know, a, a one-stop fix where you just, here's how I talk. Here's how I persuade people. I do this to everyone. It works every time. You have to be more open to how does this person receive information? How do they make decisions? Um, so to me, it's, it's understanding that. And then it's applying that in a way that's useful and practical in life to move you forward, right? Not just wasting it. Like it's got to be used for something, right? That's what it means to me. Yeah, that's awesome. That, that's awesome. And, you know, um, you know, for, for a lot of people that don't have that natural ability, are, are there anything that, are there any things that kind of jump out at you? Cause you've obviously, you run your own podcast. So you, you've spoken to a lot of very successful individuals. What is a, what are some common traits to really get your message across uh, for um, to again, trust? I mean, first and foremost, I think it's confidence. Like if you can't speak with confidence and you can't figure out how to be confident in what you're saying, it's hard for anyone else to ever believe that. It doesn't matter if it's in a relationship, a friend, a family member, a business transaction, a job interview. If you're not confident in the words are coming out of your mouth, no matter how, and honestly, it's funny because this can be to a detriment. There's some people that are just so confident. Everything they say is bullshit, but everyone believes it because they're so confident. <laughs> um, so no matter how good the information is, if you're not confident, it's useless. No one buys it. So you have to figure out how to be confident. And so when you break it down a little further, um, you know, one thing that I've done is to be confident, you have to have a true and deep understanding of whatever it is you're talking about. You have to figure out, you know, let's say it's a business transaction. If I'm talking about marketing, I have to be very confident in my marketing knowledge. It has to come from somewhere. So I have to know that I put in the work, I put in the time that what I'm talking about, I'm good at. Right. Um, and the more ethical you can be, so especially in personal life, like, let's say, you know, you're trying to pick up a girl or you're talking to a girl or whatever, or a girl talking to a guy, doesn't matter. Um, you know, one reason you might be awkward is you don't really believe the things you're saying, or, you know, they're not ethically aligned with what you are as an individual. So having your ethics kind of on point where, you know, I am who I say I am makes it a lot easier to talk with confidence. And in a professional standpoint, being an expert in whatever you're talking about, whether it's, you know, for a job you're trying to get or a business you run, being an expert, knowing you put in the work makes it a lot easier to be confident in those conversations. Right. Mm. And when you talk about what, what do you mean by expert? And, you know, you obviously are, right. um, you obviously have a lot of knowledge when it comes to marketing. So yeah. how did you get to that level? Because obviously you weren't born a marketer with all this, you know, uh, information on funnels and advertising. Yeah, and yeah. <laughs> so there's, I mean, it's, it's pretty simple. There, there's two parts to it. I'll try not to forget the second one as I go through the first one. <laughs> but the first one is, is like gathering information, right? So you have to kind of become a person, you know, whatever area of interest you have, whatever you, you need to kind of be good at, you have to get good at consuming information and applying information constantly. Not, you know, what most people do, which is go to school once, get some information and then never put in any new information again. They just go through life on that basis and nothing ever changes. You have to become someone who's constantly interested, constantly learning, constantly reading, going through articles, following things of relevance in the news, um, taking courses online, in person, continually adding to your knowledge base consistently um, helps you build confidence because it's making you that expert. So that's what I mean by becoming an expert. Um, but more so than that is, I mean, the phase two of it is applying the things you learn. Because there's also a lot of people that take in a lot of information. They do a lot of learning. They do a lot of reading, a lot of watching, but they don't do anything with it. And that also leads to a gap in your confidence. Because now you have the, the information, but you have no confidence in your ability to apply that information. So um, for me, it's been this constant gathering of information and then being religious about applying it. You know, even if it's something I don't follow through with, I need to have some sort of practical application to anything I learn. Otherwise, 
I have no confidence in it. It's just, it's just words. It's just things I've read or known if you don't actually do it. So learning as much as you can and doing as much as you can is the simplest version of saying how I think you become an expert. Cool. I love that, dude. This is a lot of value. I hope you guys are seeing this. <laughs> this is awesome. Yeah. Um, <clears throat> you know, one of the biggest things, Darren, and I know in sales, just customer service in general, like you're obviously the owner and CEO of this company. So there's a lot of, I want to say a lot of a gears that you're constantly turning and making yeah. sure that you're not messing up. And then there's the aspect of making, because communication is big is what we were talking about just right before this interview right. that you're in this stage of you have to, whether it's communicating with your staff or whether it's communicating with your clients. Yeah. And um, my thing, you know, cause <laughs> if anyone has ever done a sales job, there's some type of, I don't want to say aggression with people, but there's, you catch people that are very emotional. And I think that's where persuasion really needs to get kicked in and be sharp. Yeah. And so, you know, I don't know if there's any things that kind of pop into your head of really how you crafted that skill. Cause I feel like Darren, if I threw you like a bomb, meaning like someone who's like losing their yeah. crap, I'm guessing you deal with this with clients or with whatever the case is, totally social media. How do you respond to it and be able to not piss that person off and not be a pushover at the same time? Oh, that's interesting. That's a really <laughs> good question because I think that's what a lot of people struggle with the most. Um, so one thing I'm super underqualified to talk about this, but I'm going to do my best. <laughs> there, there's a terminology um, and it's called sensory acuity and sensory acuity. If it's something you've heard of to me is something extremely valuable. It's one of the hardest things to teach, but it's one of the most valuable things you can learn. Um, and it's basically learning how to be in tune. It kind of goes back to what I said before, learning how to be in tune with that person's emotional state um, and kind of having empathy in, in your conversation. So when you're talking to someone, not treating everyone the same, but trying to gauge quickly where they're coming from. Is this person high energy? Are they low energy? Are they shy? Are they overconfident? Are they overcompensating? Are they fearful? Um, and figuring out based on that, what you need to pull, like what levers need to be pulled to get them where you need them to go. Um, and so to me, sensory acuity is, is, is that. So every time I'm having conversations with people, um, I'm trying to figure that out and I'm trying to figure out what they respond to. And the best way to do it is to start throwing feelers out there. You don't have to be an expert, but you got to be able to pick up quickly if you're having a conversation and you start talking and they start responding in a certain way, um, you know, and it's not positive. It's something that you don't want them to go towards. You got to figure out, okay, what did I say? Or how did I say it that triggered this response and what do they need more of? So to me, it's like, it's like baking. You're constantly trying to put different ingredients in and kind of tasting along the way. Um, that's a huge part of dealing with people that are in different emotional states. Like you have to be able to be receptive to that. The other thing is it still gets based on confidence. Like if you're confident in what you're doing and what you're talking about, you know, you don't take anything personally. Like you can separate the emotion from like any sort of like personal attack. So you can actually uh, just hear what they're saying and not at all get emotional about it. You know what I mean? Mm -hmm. Yeah, for sure. I think this is like, this is like the ultimate key right here. Cause I think just in business, just in life in general, if, if you're in a relationship, if you know, if you can't control your own emotions, like I know with myself, with, with Rachel, or, you know, whenever we're like having an argument yeah. or, you know, just it's knowing how to keep your emotions in check. Cause that will burn relationships. I think this yeah. is so vital to just creating happiness in your life, essentially. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> right. Yeah. So. It's, it's so true. Yeah. Especially with relationships, man. I mean, if you can't, the sensory acuity is, I mean, I think people need to Google that after if you've not heard of it, like Google sensory acuity. Um, I think it's one of the most important things you can study, whether it's in your relationships or your business, uh, because so many people either, I mean, from lose sales to start fights with their loved ones, to create massive rifts in their friends or their coworkers, simply because when two people are talking, they're, they're, they're ta having two different conversations. Like one's thinking one thing and being triggered by a certain set of things. The other is going a whole different direction and they're just not speaking the same direction. They're not reading each other, right? They each have their own kind of objective or their own initiative. And they're pushing that without any thought of how the other person is responding, where they're coming from, how they're seeing it or what they need to understand the situation. Right? So in a lot of cases I've seen, like even losing a sale, it's like, you're speaking the wrong language. Your prospect is clearly trying to, you know, they might not be saying it clearly like, Hey, this is my problem, but they're saying things that are hinting to you that they have a certain issue or a certain doubt, or they're saying, yeah, that sounds great, but they're saying it with fear in their voice. And you're not addressing that you continue on. Okay. They said, it's great. Let's keep going. Like you have to be able to pick that stuff up. And the same thing with your partner. Like, you know, we, we, we know the classic, like, no, no, it's okay. It's like, well, it's obviously not okay. And you can hear it in the <laughs> voice. It's not okay. Um, so you need to be able to pick that up, but then not from a defensive standpoint, because you're not trying to get angry. You're not trying to be like, well, what do you mean it's okay? What you're not happy with it? It's not, no, it's, Hey, like, like what, what, what's eating at you? Like, explain to me, like, what are you actually feeling here? Because I'm here to help. Like, I want to know what it is. And once you figure it out, you can have the right conversation. 
um, you know, instead of a lot of guys, you know, their, their girl will be like, no, it's okay. It's fine. Go with your friends. And they're like, okay, cool. I'll see you on Saturday. <laughs> and you come back to a bar. Like, nice. what happened? You said it was okay. And you're like, so you have to be able to have that sensory acuity to, you know, know what conversation you need to have and what conversation the other person is having. Um, and it's absolutely critical in every area of your life. So I highly recommend Googling that and, and doing some research. Cool. That's awesome, Darren. Thank you for sharing that. So my next question to you is, you know, uh, you've obviously spoken, I, I, I remember you telling me this before, but you've spoken at different masterminds, you've spoken yeah. all over uh, the US and, yeah. um, you know, high level events and you've essentially created networks and built real good yeah. connections where not only is there a, an affinity there, but they said, Darren is so good. We want him to come out. And from what I understand, they've like paid for your totally. flights. They've, oh, yeah, they've yeah. brought you out. How did you, how did you get that? How did you get someone? Because, <laughs> you know, you're not like some 50 year old man with like, no. check out my history of all this yeah. stuff, right? <laughs> I think it comes back. It's funny because I think it's, it's funny how like in line this all is because it's everything we just talked about. You know, so firstly, taking information, becoming an expert. So taking information, applying that, becoming an expert continuing to apply that as an expert gets attention and you start to meet people and you make connections and then using things like sensory acuity to build deeper relationships, to have empathy, to be able to dive deeper into those people. Uh, in, in a sense, you, you can really, cause the thing is like, you can be like the biggest expert in the world. Like in my case, you can be the best market in the world. Cause I'm not, um, but you can be a total dick. Like you could have complete incapacity to communicate with anybody and you won't be able to make relationships no matter how good you are. You won't be able to make friends. You won't, you're going to be the guy no one wants to party. And so you have to become the guy that people want to party. And you do that through obviously one, getting their attention, which is what I did. You know, I was young, I built a company, I got results, I made friends, I made clients, but then getting really close to those clients with sensory acuity, like being the guy they could always talk to, that always understood, that always could go the right way with the conversation. Um, that went a long way. And so I used that, I leveraged that. I, I first provided value, you know, as the expert, I became an expert. Um, and then I built the relationships and just through building and leveraging those relationships, um, opportunities came up and I'm also, you know, I was the kind of person that doesn't say no. And I kind of like, I thought I don't say no, but early in my career, I was smart enough to like say yes to whatever opportunity kind of knock, even if it wasn't paid. Mm -hmm. Like, you know, I, my partner and, and friend, Dave Benson, now we've been going back and forth, working on projects for four or five years. He's in Australia. He's the one that would fly me out to Vegas, pay for my hotel, pay for my stay, pay for my food, pay for my flights. Um, and I would just come out and, and, and speak and I'd spend time. And I, you know, he did the same thing in Florida and like, we'd go to Orlando and Miami and um, all that came out of like friendships I built, right. Um, with him. And when he would offer, I'd be like, yeah, fuck it. I was like, ah, oh, let me see. Oh, I'm busy. Oh, I'm not sure. I'm like, no, I'll do it. Let's go. Let's hit it. Um, and I think a lot of people are saying no too early in their life. There's a time and place for that. Um, but I was in the beginning, I was very open to everything. I was like, sure. I'll do that podcast. I'll do the interview. Actually that particular co connection started from a podcast. Just like you asked me today to come for this, for the summit. Um, and record this. I was asked to be in a podcast. I was like, yeah, sure. I'll be in a podcast. I didn't say, no, I'm kind of nervous or I've never been on a podcast before. It was like my first podcast. I'm like, yeah, I don't even know what podcast is. I'll do it. Um, and I jumped on it and I did it. And it just, it's just saying yes, those opportunities. And as they come continuing to say yes. Um, and, and having that sensory acuity throughout that, that relationship process and building that and deepening relationships and being open to opportunities. Mm -hmm. So it's initially what you're saying is if the, you could put this into a step-by-step -step process. Yep. The first thing is get yourself an expert or, or, or sorry, be, or become, become an expert. expert. Yeah. Become an expert. Yeah. And then once you become an expert, make sure that's marketable. Make sure people actually know that you're an expert. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. And, um, and, and also nurture the most valuable part of that, which is any relationships you build along the way, whatever you're doing in your life, nurture those relationships, you know, don't be transactional. Don't be cold. Don't be distant. I think my, my biggest skill is, you know, I don't do what they teach you in business school. I'm not your, your professional court. People come to my office for the first time and I talk to them like this. It's not a, oh, hello, sir, have a seat. I'm a friend right away. I make inappropriate jokes sometimes right away. If, again, sensory acuity, I can feel who they are and I can break walls very quickly. Yeah, so yeah. being a real person. So as you're becoming that expert and you're going out in the world and you're doing things, don't be afraid. Like, don't put a wall up. Get that wall down and learn to get other people's wall down because it opens up opportunities. That's awesome. This is, this is some good stuff, everyone. Hopefully the viewers are really enjoying this. This is some <laughs> really good stuff. Hope so, 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 uh, so Darren, my next question to you is you're obviously what you, what you're an expert in is advertising. That's, yeah. that's if, if, if we could give it one word, it would be advertising. Yeah. Okay. And marketing really, but mainly, mainly advertising, uh, you know, to, to give it the, yeah, so, totally. So, you know, my next question is, um, a lot of people, 
want to have this attractive, persuasive personality and not yeah. just with that one person, but to many, and they want to create many people's attentions, right? Totally. Um, on online, whether it's Facebook, Instagram, YouTube, yep. Google, whatever the case is, what are some tips for someone to take the, their personality and be able to share it online? What are some uh, mistakes and what are some things that you should really be applying? So oddly enough, and this is why I love this conversation right now, because it's all so congruent. Like it's going to be the same answer. Yeah. Oddly enough, the same fundamentals that make you an effective and persuasive communicator one-to-one -one apply when it's one-to-many. So when you think of who's successful when it comes to building these brands on social media and making those connections on mass um, through these social networks, it's usually people that A, have framed themselves in some way, shape, or form as an expert in something, right? Two, um, have shown that they can actually apply that and done something in the real world. There's some sort of track record. Um, and then because of that, they portray confidence. Like you never see a social media influencer of any sort or someone with a large network who's awkward and who's shy and who's like, I wasn't gonna make a video today, guys, but like, I kind of thought I'd say hi. Like that doesn't happen. They're always very <laughs> confident. They're always very outgoing. They're always sure of what they're saying. Um, but they're also very ethical and they're very real. So I think there's a lot of people out there that try to build a brand, but it's, it's fake because they don't have the expertise. They don't have the application. They don't have the actual confidence. A lot of people are skipping to that. Like, well, I need confidence. I'll fake confidence. It's not always the case. You got to find a way to build true confidence because people can tell. We can all tell when we're scrolling social media and you see someone talking, you're like, this guy's bullshitting. Like, this is all, like, this guy doesn't feel this way. He doesn't live that way. It's, it's clearly fake. And that's the biggest mistake you can make. So if you want to really get that brand on social media and make meaningful connections, first of all, go on there and be confident and take the necessary steps so you can be confident. Don't fake something, right? Figure it out. Like in your case, if you're building your social media, right? And you're going around this whole angle and you, you know, you're helping people communicate and overcome these various challenges. You've gone through those challenges. You've collected the information on, on those, whatever you were dealing with, you've applied that information to build yourself up. And now you're confident as you speak about it because you've gone through it. So people will believe it and it's authentic. That's a huge part. You hear a lot of people say authenticity, be authentic, but they don't give you that depth that I just did. That's what you have to do to get to that. Mm -hmm. um, then once you did that, the funny part is it all applies. Just again, like congruency here, that sensory acuity applies on social media. Understanding as you're starting to create content, who your audience is, where they are, what they're feeling, what they need, what they're responding to, right? And not just getting caught up in things like vanity metrics. Like I did this really stupid post and I got a ton of likes. Like pay attention. Are there comments? What are they saying? What are the conversations? When you're getting DMs, reply to them, have meaningful conversations with people one-to-one -one for as long as you can. I know people get their first thousand, 2,000, 3,000 followers, and suddenly they're too big to respond to a DM. They take it for granted. Someone sends them a nice long message and they just like it. It's like, respond, have a conversation, make that connection, be open to that person. That's how you're going to build those relationships that open up to further opportunities, right? That's how you build a meaningful network. You do it one-to-one, -one. but in a world today where everything has to be done so quickly, people are looking for that quick fix. How do I do it fast? How do I do it on mass? You don't. It's one brick at a time. Mm. Yeah, I saw that post. There you I go. I think I, I reposted that. Uh, yeah, that on the two social Instagram. Yeah, that was Rebecca. That was Rebecca on my team. Yeah, that was, I was like, man, Spot that, was, on. That, was, that, was, that, that was awesome. One yeah. brick at a time. Yeah, they said Rome wasn't built in a day, uh, but it was built one brick at a time, Yeah, basically. Yeah, so true. Or one toilet at a time. <laughs> one toilet at a time. <laughs> yeah, you can't fill the city without toilets. That's for sure. <laughs> that would be yeah. shit. Cool, man. Well, yeah, this is, uh, this is, uh, this is really good. You know, it's so funny. It's these basics, you know, what yeah. I'm, what I'm very big on Darren with this whole sum and kind of what I'm realizing is not even as I do it. Um, the whole intention behind this, 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 uh, event is to give people the tools to be that confident speaker. And when I bring someone like you on Darren, what I show is a life of what can happen when you master these skills. Mm. See, the foundation to really business, professional life, a solid relationship, just happiness in general is having solid communication. Totally. Once you have that, the sky's the limit. Once you have yeah. a great personality, the sky's the limit. Yeah. And I think a lot of people don't really have this. They don't have pleasing personalities. They don't know how to read emotions. They don't know how to respond when someone says something. And what happens is they're just confused the majority of their life. Yeah. Yeah. You know, it's so. true, man. I mean, how do you go through life as, as a human on this planet when everything you think, everything you believe is stuck in your head and, and you can't get it out and you can't relay that? How can you ever have meaningful relations? How can you ever build depth? How can you ever really succeed in any way meaningful without being able to do that? So 
hundred percent. Everyone's focused on, you know, tricks, tips, get rich quick, but the secret is right here. Like learn how to communicate, learn how to build confidence, communicate effectively, and you can pretty much do anything you want. No doubt. Yeah, I, I love it. So Darren, as we wrap up this interview specifically, um, is there any last things that you kind of want to leave with someone um, or the, or the viewer who, you know, maybe either is that zero and they want to take their words and put it out there. Or that person who has that, that younger Darren, who's like driven and hungry and wants to get to that next level. Any words that you want to say uh, to those people that just want to create happiness and, and success in their life? So I'll give you, I'll give you a phrase from one of my coaches, Craig Ballantyne. Um, I mean, he's great. You can find him on social media too. And, and he's, he's a great uh, example of building confidence and speaking effectively. Um, but he has a saying and it's in his book and it's all over social and it's action beats anxiety. Um, that's what I would leave you with. A lot of you are doing things no matter where you are in your life right now. Maybe you're just, you know, a, you know, a younger version of me, you're still stuck living at home. You haven't really got through much yet, but you have ambition. You're just scared. You don't know how to, how to get out there in the world and start it. You don't know who to talk to. You don't know how to talk to them. You just, it seems like a long ways away. Um, you know, or maybe you're that person, like we said, that's, that's starting something you're, you're at zero. You want to build a brand. You want to get out there, build a business, whatever it is. Um, and that's intimidating. The best advice for all of that is action beats anxiety. And what that means is just start doing shit, you know, start and put one foot in front. It sounds cheesy, but it's, it's so true. What's the first step you can take? You start there. Don't think about the solution. Don't think about the end game. Don't try to map out everything. Just what's the first thing you need to do. If you're still stuck in that room and you're living at home, get out. If you haven't talked to anyone, you have no network, you have no connections, start by making one, reach out to one person, set up one call, make one friend, right? If you're on social media and you haven't started and you're at zero, make a post, make one, respond to one comment, respond to one DM, take that first step and just start moving. Um, because I was, I was there at one point. I mean, in terms of just like, I was a young kid at, at one point before business, I was shy. I was awkward. I, I think like if you went back 10 years, I was a shy, awkward kid who, who had no confidence, who couldn't have a proper conversation. Um, I was known as like a shy kid growing up in general, like even around my own family, I couldn't talk properly. Um, a lot can change. If you start taking one step at a time, don't get cut off in the anxiety of it. Stop worrying about it. Stop trying to plan the perfect roadmap and blueprint um, and just start moving. Like if you're following, you know, especially if they're following you and you're giving them advice, you're bringing them experts. There's a lot of tips in this. There's a lot of actionable ideas. Pick one, start moving and you can get through the rest. Yeah. I love that, Darren. It, well, thank you so much. I really, really, really appreciate it. Uh, Darren, um, you did an awesome job. Um, as well, for everyone watching, I do a private bonus interview for, for everyone in the, uh, for all the speakers in the all access pass. Um, so if you haven't upgraded yet, be sure to upgrade. My name again is Daniel Francis, the creator of the master starter program. This is the 30 day speaker summit. Uh, we've got a lot of speakers given so much value tips and just life advice that can ultimately change your life. So 30 days from now, you're a completely different speaker and a completely different person. So thank you again, Darren. I appreciate you. And I'll see you in the next interview. Love it, man. Thanks for having me on.